let's get started. Now, I'm going to use a whiteboard uh, to illustrate some of these ideas and some of these points. I'm not a great artist, so please try not to judge me, those of you out there who are brilliant artists. Okay, so that's supposed to be a street. In, in one of my books, I described the desired outcome as the destination, right? So let's, X is the destination. So when the client comes into your office, they're trying to get to their destination. So the very first thing we do is on the solution-focused road, we want to know about their best hopes. Because at the time they came into the session, we don't know what their destination is. And in some cases, they don't know in a, in a front of their mind kind of way what the destination is. What they know is there's a problem in their life that is causing them some level of discomfort, in some cases significant levels of discomfort, and they want the problem removed. So very often, when people come into your office, they're much more prepared to tell you about the thing that's causing them to feel lost, as opposed to looking for a destination. Like I tell this story all the time, but I travel quite a bit, and I go to different countries and different cultures and different cities, and there was one time I got really, really lost. And I was so nervous and scared. I mean, I, I can joke about it now because it's actually quite funny. But I was in a foreign country in a new land and I was completely lost. I couldn't understand the street signs. In most cases, couldn't find them. And I was lost for a couple of hours, actually. And when I saw a taxi cab and I jumped into the cab, the cab driver turned to me and asked me, where are you going? And I couldn't answer it because I was so impacted by the problem being lost that my anxiety caused me to forget where I was going and I couldn't even think of the name of my hotel. So what I was looking for was like, take me to safety, like not here. But we have to be able to articulate, we have to be able to ask questions and help the client to articulate what is their best hope from the talking, which in essence is, what destination are you trying to be at? Where are you trying to go? And then on Solution Focus Street, not only do I not draw well, but my penmanship is terrible too, we have resources. So in essence, and we refer to this as resource talk. So now that I know the client's desired outcome, what resources do you have in your life that make that desired outcome possible, right? And let me give you an example. I saw a professional athlete um, um, years ago, uh, so I asked him what his desired outcome was, and he told me he wanted to be a better decision maker. He was struggling in his uh, relationships with his spouse, with his, with his children, and even what he referred to as work, but on the team that he played on, and he said he wanted to be a better decision maker. So I asked him, uh, what does he have in his life that makes him a good athlete? Because what I knew was he was a good, in fact, a world-class athlete. So what do you have in your life that makes you a good athlete? And he said, well, I'm really fast and I'm really strong. And I said, let's make a list of 30 resources that you have in your life that makes you a really good athlete. And he said, man, I don't know if I, we can come up with 30. So on a whiteboard similar to this, I said, one, two, three, four, five. We get all the way down to 30. And he starts listing them out. And he says... I'm a good, uh, I'm fast, I'm strong, I work hard, I practice, all of these things. He got down to number 36, because once we got to 30, I said, can we get like two more? Can we get a few more? Number 36, he said, I make really good decisions. And I asked him, how does making really good decisions make you a good athlete? And he said, well, I have to make good decisions off the field uh, to keep out of trouble and things like to manage my diet well. And I have to make really good decisions on the field. And he talked about how athletically he makes decisions on what he's going to do when he's playing the sport. And the, the question simply became, and if you continue to use these resources, but instead of using them just to be an athlete, you use them throughout your whole life, what's the first thing you would notice? And he thought, oh my gosh, I had never even thought of that before. And all of a sudden it changed his thinking. So all of a sudden I'm not a good decision maker as an athlete. I'm a good decision-making globally, 
And by analyzing this man's resources, it helped him to, to reconceptualize who he is and how he is. The biggest thing I want you to understand, like if you want to make a difference in someone's life, you have to impact what they see when they look into a mirror. Meaning they have to look at themselves and their capabilities differently in order to transform their lives. So next, on our journey, preferred future question, on our journey down Solution Books Road is the preferred future question. Now listen, I don't want you to get bogged down with this idea of a miracle question and feel like you have to ask a scripted, suppose you went to sleep one night and a miracle happened that solved all your problems, blah, 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 blah. What we're simply asking our clients, and I want you to really understand this, what we're simply asking our clients is, now that I know your best hopes, i.e. your destination, when you arrive here, what in your life will be different? And that's a really important distinction to know. Because it's not just necessarily, suppose you went to sleep one night, a miracle happened, that's all very wrong, blah, blah. It's like, so when you get to here, what difference is that going to make in your life? Like, I want you to understand this, so I'm going to try really hard to make this very clear. Because as I just used as an example with this athlete, and this, this professional athlete, he's a world-class success in one area, but his life is like falling apart around him. And once we talk about his resources, I could have said, suppose we'd sleep one night and a miracle happened, but instead you simply say, so these 30 or 36 resources you have, suppose all of a sudden you start using those in all areas of your life, not just your athletic areas, what would you notice? That's a preferred future question, because a preferred future question is in essence, suppose at some point your desired outcome becomes your reality. What would you notice? And then you spend most of the session following this up with a series of what else questions? Because it's, it's not just a question, it's a process, right? So what do you best know from talking? I want to be a better decision maker. Can you tell me 36 things that make you a successful professional athlete? Because one of the things that I know that helped me make that leap is he must have a bit of that because of the success he's had in his life. Which is why I say it is so important, to, if you're gonna use Solution Focus Brief Therapy effectively, it's important that you recognize and understand all of your clients have successes. Now, in some cases, I've said similar things to clients. So what do you guys so far talking? I wanna be a better decision maker. So given that you are such a success in your professional life, what 30 skills do you have? What 30 traits or abilities do you have in your life that make you a successful a bit a person in your professional life, but it could be, what do you guys so far talking? I need to do better in school. Oh, what grade are you in? I'm in the fourth grade. What 30 things do you have inside of you that helped you get to the third grade or fourth grade? You see what I'm saying? Like it's any accomplishment helps you make the leap from desired outcome to resources the client possesses to help them get on with life in a better way. And then you make the leap to a preferred future question, right? So now that I, we've talked about your desired outcome, we have brought your resources into the room. And I should also say, this is not an assessment. I'm not assessing for his resources. You know, when I was doing CBT, like I talked about in the first video, I would assess clients for their resources for the purposes of me giving that client uh, an intervention later on. In this particular case, I'm doing this so I can get language to ask a really good preferred future question and then follow up because it's not just a question. Most of the session is spent right here, right? When we go down Solution Focus Road, it's like we stop here for gas. You know what I mean? Like this is where we're going to spend most of the time on Solution Focus Road because we're going to be asking, and what else would you notice uh, when you wake up on a day when you're using your resources to get to your destination? What would your wife notice, husband notice, children notice, co-workers notice? You can even ask about uh, non-humans. What would your dog notice? Because trust me, guys, your dog would notice on a day when you're at your very best. What would your cat notice? What would your car notice? Because we drive differently on a day when we're at our best versus when we're not. What would, you know what I mean? So in this part of the session, we're going to be following up this by saying, so what are your best hopes? I want to be a better decision maker. What resources do you have to make that more likely? Suppose in your future this better decision making became a reality, right? 
so now it's it's like we're saying so when you arrive at that destination what will your life be like but we want to get as many details as possible about that and most of the time of the session is spent here okay got it so most of the time of the session is spent here and then session closing now, it is very, very often that people ask me, yeah, Elliot, that's great, I appreciate it. You know, because a lot of times, you know, you go to conferences and you do one hour or whatever. Uh, I mean, I went to Scotland recently, did a 45-minute workshop. I can't show the entire session arc. When people ask me, how do you close a session? And it's different for every therapist, so I want to be very honest with you. But here's what I will say. You just spent an hour with the client being the expert, right? The client is the expert in the session. The client is the one that is the knowledgeable person about Solution Focused Road. So don't, at the end of the session, become the authority and start trying to help the client get here. Your job is to simply trust that this talk here impacted the client's ability to get to the destination. So one of the people, that, like I'll, I'll talk about the way that I end the session because it's been significantly influenced by one of my closest friends and mentors, uh, Chris Iverson. He gets to the end of the session and he says, I'm about all out of time. Is there anything that you wished I had asked but I didn't? And the client says yes or no. And then he says, if you think another session would be helpful, I'd be happy to see you. Would you like another session? And the client says yes or no. And then the session is over, which is very different than because you said this, I'm going to advise you to go home and do this, right? We don't really want to do that because then that's us getting all the way to the end. We're right close to the destination and then becoming the authority of the client's life by telling them what to do. We're just going to get to the end of the session and honor the process and honor the work and trust that they know what they're doing. So how is that for you? Like, does that make sense? Do you understand, like, this is the process we go through in a solution focused conversation. Now, people email me all the time and they say things like, like, Elliot, what about, here, I'll, I guess I'll do it over here. What about mandated clients? Sometimes around the world they call them statutory. But what about mandated clients? What about uh, depression or, or what about uh, anxiety or, or what about uh, addiction or da 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 da, any, any of that stuff? And you guys will hear a lot of solution-focused uh, therapists will say, we do the same thing. But this is what we mean. It doesn't matter what any of these things are. They all go down solution-focused road. Right? And now our brain tells us, but a client who's got anxiety, do we have to treat them differently than a client who has a drinking problem versus depression versus suicide? That's a big one. I just got emailed about Somebody emailed me about that this morning, actually. But it's the same because all of them, we treat every client like they're in pursuit of something and we're all trying to get to a destination and they all go through solution-focused road. Now, sometimes in solution-focused road, you'll spend more time here versus here or here versus here or here versus here, but this is where the gas station is. We all have to take a pit stop into what else because that's where we explore the details but what your life will be like when you arrive at your destination, right? So does that make sense? I, I really, really want this to drive home. I really, really want this to make sense that no matter what the diagnosis or problem is, maybe the client is mandated, maybe they're a teenager, maybe they're a, a husband or a wife who's having trouble or whatever it is, they go down this street. This is solution-focused road, and all our clients go down solution-focused road. Now, what makes Solution Focused Grief Therapy so effective, regardless of the, the problem brought the client in, is because we don't assess problem. So, in, in the problem-focused therapy world, there's got to be some level of, a, of marriage between problem and treatment. But in Solution Focused Grief Therapy, we're just trying to get here. So instead of treating clients like they have a problem, we're treating clients like they're in pursuit of something, which is the getting of the here. Right? Does that make sense? So, Think about it. No matter what your client comes to the office with, we're going to ask them, what are your best hope from our talking? What resources do you possess in your life that help that become a reality? Suppose at some point in your future, you, those, uh, this desired outcome becomes your reality. What else, what else, what else, what else? So we can talk about the details of the differences of experiencing that reality, and then we close the session. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, please, 
let me know. Send me questions, leave comments below. I really want to know that this makes sense. And if you have any, any questions whatsoever, ask them below and, and we'll extrapolate it. But this is the most important thing in solution focus therapy because I really think the number one question I get asked starts with, but what about when dot dot dot? And the answer is always the same. We treat every client like they're the same because they all go down solution focus street. So I hope that makes sense to you. Now in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the biggest mistake that clinicians make when they're trying to apply the solution focused approach with their clients. But even more importantly than that, like I hate when people talk, talk about like the biggest mistake that people make, but there really is a big mistake that people make and I'm gonna talk to you about how to avoid that mistake forever. I'm gonna totally crush and obliterate that mistake forever. So guys, this is really tricky. That's why I said in the last video, and I mean it, like in order to master this process, like how do I take someone who comes into my office with real trouble and real problems, how do I help them go down Solution Focus Street? That's why I talk about like literally spend an hour a week practicing with colleagues and friends uh, going over solution focused material and trainings. Like if you just do that, it'll make the biggest difference in your work. So the, the, what I would love to ask you, and I want you to leave a comment below and, and really this is serious. Like I really want to help you get this. So, so leave a comment below about what barriers do you experience about mastering the solution focused approach? Like what have you experienced getting in your way about mastering the solution focused approach? And I'm going to see if I can help you in the comment section and, uh, and help you overcome those barriers. But I want you to leave a comment below about what barriers have you experienced about overcoming, uh, or about mastering the solution focused approach. For example, one of the things that I experienced was a big trouble was I had a lot of my supervisors and professors telling me that solution focused brief therapy was not effective. And it created this kind of odd thinking in my head that maybe I'm going down the wrong track. And that really got in my way in those early days about learning solution focused brief therapy. Because believing in your clients is so important, uh, this really, it really got in my way to think in that way. So I'm curious, what, what things are you experiencing as barriers? I've had people tell me they have a hard time getting their hands on training material. It's hard to see sessions. They work in a, in a very problem focused environment and it's hard for them to talk about their cases. Could be anything, but I'd like you to leave a comment below about what barriers you experience about mastering this solution focused approach. And uh, I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching the video. And I'm super excited to hit, listen to your comments and questions below and in my email.